good to see each of you here this evening. We're glad that that you have chosen to come out again uh, in spite of the weather uh, being a little chilly, we'll say. You will bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, humbly we bow before you in prayer. We praise you, exalt you. Father, we are thankful for all that you have blessed us with. Father, we are thankful for your word that we have to study. We pray that we will be diligent in our studies, that we will look at these things, apply them to our lives appropriately, Father, that we will live accordingly. Father, sharing your word with others, that they may come to know you and be saved as well, Father. Father, we ask that you forgive us of any sins that we have in our lives which would hinder our worship of you, Father. And again, we pray that all will be done in accordance with your will in a pleasing manner, Father. In Christ's most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Romans chapter 12, in verses 1 and 2, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul would write to the Romans, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are taught here, and we could spend much time on these two verses and learn uh, quite a bit. But I want us to notice here two key points in this text and that is that we are not to be conformed to this world but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds what is it to be conformed to this world we understand hopefully that if we are conformed to this world then we are made like the world we are made like the wickedness of this world. We live as the world lives. And we look around and it's not difficult to see how the world lives. We see much sin. And, and of course this is not something new. We know that it's been going on. We can look at the very beginning. How that in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve sin. And we see over and over again, sin. Cain and Abel. We see in chapter 4, Cain did what? He failed to obey God's instruction and then was angry with God for it because God did not accept his sacrifice and he killed his own brother because of his own wickedness. And Sin did not stop there. We could go through and we could spend our entire time looking at different sin that was committed throughout history. But we see here that if we are to be as God would have us to be, we are not to be conformed to that. We are not to be like that. We are to be rather transformed. And this evening... I want us to ask the question and study just how we do so. How are we? How do we transform ourselves? We do so by seeking those things above, by putting on and putting off certain things, and by mortifying our members. We look in the book of Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3. And we read Paul here writing in verse 1, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. 
Set your affections on things above, not on things on this earth. We are to seek those things which are above. When we stop and consider what things those things are, we see in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 the idea, the, the things that we are to have our minds on. Paul here writing to the Philippians would say in Philippians 4 and verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things we are to have our minds on. We are to be looking to those things that are above, those things that are pleasing to God, those things that are after Christ. After all, we are Christians, are we not? And as Christians, we know we are to be Christ-like. We think of what Peter would write in 2 Peter chapter 1, and beginning with verse 5. 2 Peter chapter 1, and beginning <clears throat> excuse me, with verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we are seeking those things above, then these are the things we are doing. These are the things we are looking to. We are adding to our lives. <laughs> and if I am to be transformed, if you are to be transformed, then that is exactly, brothers and sisters, what we must uh, be doing. The Bible teaches us much on what is pleasing to God. And simply put, that is what we must have our minds on if we are to transform ourselves into being Christ-like. And is that not what we are to be transformed into is being more like Christ each and every day? We likewise see, and looking here in the book of Colossians chapter 3, we see certain things that we are to put on in our lives and things that we are to put off. We begin by understanding that we must put off certain things. The Bible teaches us here in verse 9, in fact, that if we are Christians, we are to have put off the old man with his deeds. Paul would write in Romans chapter 6, would speak about the new birth, if you will, about being crucified, putting off, in fact, that old man. We see in verse, beginning with verse 3 of Romans chapter 6, in fact, that we are to be risen. If we are Christians, we have been risen with Christ. And we see here, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, 
that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So when we, cruci when we are buried with Christ in baptism, we are crucifying the old man. We are putting off the old man. Back in Colossians chapter 3, we back up a verse and we see various things in context here that goes along with that idea of putting off the old man. Things that we are to put off as Christians. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. These are things we are to put off. We are to put them away. They are not to be a part of our lives. Brothers and sisters, if we have obeyed the gospel, and if we are in fact Christians, then we profess that is what we have done. If we have, put all, if we have obeyed the gospel, then these are things that ought not to be seen in our lives. And we recognize, hopefully, that we are not perfect. Even as we have obeyed the gospel, we do not suddenly become perfect. We do not suddenly stop doing everything and live perfectly. But we cannot live in these things. We cannot live our lives in such a way where these things are presented in our lives. For we must have put off these things. But we must also put certain things on. Colossians 3 and verse 10, we are to put on the new man. And I put on the new, the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Again, what did Paul speak of whenever he, there in Romans chapter 6? The old man is crucified. He is buried. And what rises? A new creature. The new man rises. The new man is there. When you came forward and obeyed the gospel, wherever that might have been, whenever that might have occurred, you went into that watery grave of baptism and you came up and spiritually speaking, that old man was dead. That old man was put away. He was crucified. And you rose a new person, a new creature, living in Christ and each day of your life, you must continually work to transform yourself to ever be like Christ, more and more so. And we must recognize that, brothers and sisters, that we do not live in those things that we have been living in. We put on, indeed, the new man. We see further in verse 12, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, bearing one another, and forgiving one another, one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. What do we see here in these verses? Things that we are to put on. We are to put on bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. When we read there in Romans chapter 12, that we are not to be conformed to this world, we are to be transformed. When we are transformed, when we read that, what does it mean to us? It means these things that we put on ought to be more and more seen in our lives. We ought to live daily and, and grow daily, spiritually speaking. And we see the more and more in our lives each day. What did Paul say here in Colossians 
3 and verse 14. And above all these things put on, the King James Version there says charity. If you have a new King James, you'll notice the word love. The word there is love. Above all put on love. Love for our brethren in Christ. Love for our fellow man. Love, in fact, for our enemies. We could. We've done so on various occasions. We could look at the different texts that teach us about the love that we are to have for others and including, as we notice there in Matthew chapter 5, and beginning with verse 43, love for our enemies. It's not difficult, is it, to love those who love us? It's not difficult to love someone when they do kindness to us. It's not difficult to love someone when they do things that make us happy, is it? But how difficult is it to love those who do us harm, who spitefully use us, who persecute us? And yet, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount instructs us to do just that. To love those who do us harm. To love those who are not kind to us. We are to put on those things. And brothers and sisters, we are taught further when we look here in Colossians chapter 3. And we look back in verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. What members are we talking about? What things are we looking at when we think of mortifying the things of this earth? We think of those things that are listed here beginning in verse 5. The things of this earth, brothers and sisters. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time which ye lived in them. When ye lived in them, that is. These things cannot be in our lives, brothers and sisters. They must be put to death. These are the things that we have seen in our lives. We see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, or excuse me, chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, where Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he would say in ver beginning in verse 9 of chapter 6, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. These things will condemn us, brothers and sisters. And I know that there are those out there, when we start looking at these things, they get upset about that idea. How can you condemn someone else? How can you judge someone else? When you look at these things, and the things that are included, you're just being judgmental. You can't say that these things are wrong. Brothers and sisters, I don't have to say they're wrong. I don't have to say they will condemn us. The Word of God teaches us that they are wrong and that these things will condemn us. Notice again here in chapter 6, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Who are the unrighteous? The ones who are doing these things. <clears throat> but notice in verse 11 and such were some of you some of the Corinthians were in that these things they were committing these sins <clears throat> and what did Paul tell the tell the Colossians in chapter 3 and verse 7 and of which ye also walked some time. Guess what? 
The Colossians were in some of these things. And notice the two lists. They are very similar, are they not? And brothers and sisters, we look today and we recognize that we have walked in some of those things at one time or another. Perhaps you look at the list and you say, well, well Robert, I didn't, I didn't do that. I, I didn't do that. But understand, every one of us has walked in unrighteousness at one time or another. Every one of us, each and every one of us, has sinned at one time or another, and we have transgressed the word of God. We are often accused of judging when we speak against such things as homosexuality and such. That we're judging. First of all, again, it is God who has already stated those things will condemn the souls of those who practice them. But understand, if we are living the Christian life, we are not saying those things in some hateful way. We're saying them to warn people against those things. And we are saying them recognizing, brothers and sisters, and I broaden this out beyond the idea of homosexuality. But when we start speaking of those things, we recognize that we have walked in some of those things. There are people who have walked in those sins and have turned their back against them. Just as Paul told the Corinthians that they had done. Again, we look there in verse 11 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I don't mean to focus on the one issue, but in modern day we see that the homosexual agenda is being pushed. And people get upset when people say, you can't change from those things. Oh, you can't, you can't do that. And you, you, you right-wing crazy people, you, you, just, you, you just don't know what you're talking about. Brothers and sisters, Paul here by inspiration listed those who were practicing homosexuality. They were included, and such were some of you, but, but why? Now you are not. Now you are washed. Now you are sanctified. Now you are justified. Now you are different. They can say what they want. And you can, and lest we be accused of, of talking just about that, you can include these other sins as well. Fornication and such. It is possible to turn away from those sins. We must, in fact, if we are to be transformed into something new, we must, in fact, mortify. We must put those things to death. Is that simple? <clears throat> if I am to live the Christian life, then I must put those things away. Paul there in Romans 12 and verses 1 and 2. He, he gives us that, that comparison, that contra contrast, if you will, between being conformed to this world and being transformed into what Christ would have us. Being transformed into being Christ-like, in fact. And, and as I've already sa said here, if we are to be transformed, then we put those things away. But in fact, if we are participating in those things, what have we in fact done? We have been conformed to this world. The world lives like that. Paul speaks of the Corinthians and the Colossians, and we can speak of ourselves and say, we have been like that. We have lived in the world like that, but now we have put those things off. We have put them to death. Those things are no longer part of our lives. And in any measure that they are, brothers and sisters, we must work daily to put them away and not to fall into them. 
We are to be transformed into something different, into the Word of God, into being Christ-like. We look here in the book of Colossians and we see in chapters 3 and 4 and we're not going to go through the chapters here completely but I would encourage you to read into, in fact I would encourage you to read the entire book it's not a lengthy book but we see in chapters 3 and 4 that in fact Paul deals with some very practical Things. <clears throat> the practicality of living Christ like lives, of being like Christ. And we could go through and look at these things, and these are the things that he speaks of the right way of doing, the right way of living. These are the things we ought to see in our lives, in our relationships, one with another and with others. And if we want to be transformed as Paul instructed the Romans and as the Word of God instructs us today, then these are the things we have to be doing. This evening, if you're here, maybe you haven't obeyed the gospel. Maybe you've never put on Christ in the first place. Paul, in, in chapter 3 and verse 1 here, speaks of, if ye then be risen. There's that word, and it's a big word as we've looked at before. If, if ye then be risen. If you've never obeyed the, the gospel, then you've not been risen with Christ. As, as Paul speaks of in Romans chapter 6. But you can be, you don't have to wait any longer. The Bible tells each of us what we must do, how we must hear the Word, believe in Christ as the Son of God, repent of our own sins, confess Him to be the Son of God, and be baptized, immersed in water for the remission of our sins. If you're here having never done that, all things are ready. We'd be glad to help you to obey the Gospel. Maybe you want to study. Maybe you have some questions first. We'd be glad to sit down and study with you. <coughs> Maybe you are a Christian. But maybe you look at your life. Maybe something we've said tonight has opened your eyes and you, you say, I, I need to put that away. I need to change. Or maybe something different. The important thing to remember is whatever we have done that has separated us from God, whatever sin we have committed, He promised if we're faithful to confess our faults, He's faithful to forgive us. If we can be of assistance in helping you to do any of these, we encourage you, we plead with you to come while we stand and while we sing. First, second, fourth verse. Careless soul, what will you leave?